Hello again. About three years ago I made a video showing how I converted pieces of scrap wood into small panels for use in fretwork. The sort of thing I'm talking about is something like this. Uh, the panels vary in thickness but generally down to about a quarter of an inch which is about six millimetre I suppose and not very large. The problem is that it's not easy, certainly in the UK, to buy panels of wood like this. Well I don't know where, you have to go to a specialist wood dealer I suppose. Uh, especially in hardwood, softwood is not so bad, but for fretwork you really need hardwood. This is another one I've done, a mahogany one. And what I thought I'd do, I'd update the video a little bit and uh, do another version, now I've got a better camera, showing how I actually make these panels up, because it might be useful to somebody to know. If you're going to make something like this particular item here, this is a gamekeeper bracket, this is an old hobbies design, about 60 years ago I suppose it came out. Again, you need a fairly wide piece of wood to do that, and it's not easy to buy wood like that to do it. Now you could make it out of plywood, obviously, you can buy plywood in sheet form, so it's not so bad. Now, a few weeks ago I did a video showing another thing I was making which I haven't actually finished making the video yet so forgive me if I'm showing part of it before I finish the other video. Uh, this is a, a simple little hobbies bracket, a very very old one, old design from many years ago and as you can see I've made this one in plywood and it's perfectly easy to do that because you can buy sheet plywood quite easily. Whether it's good enough quality is another matter. But if you want to make it in hardwood, like this one, I made two versions, this is a hardwood version, you're going to need a sheet of hardwood uh, about maximum quarter of an inch thick to make that, and again, it's not easy to buy it. So this is where my homemade boards come in. Also, it's using up a, a useful resource that would otherwise be thrown away, isn't it? That's the point. Now, the thing is, I'll just show you some of the boards I've actually made recently in the last... In the last week or so I've been busy making these boards so I had a, a bit of spare time. So this piece here is the front of an old chest of drawers and as you can see there's some holes in it but that doesn't matter for what we're using it. Uh, what I did I, I, I cut it down the middle and then glued it together and planed it down. As you can see it's a, a fairly decent piece of timber for making fretwork designs. In fact you could make that gamekeeper bracket would fit on there for example you see. So if you wanted to cut that out that would be ideal for that but people throw away wood like this. Uh, it wasn't like that when I got it. It was a frame of a door and somebody gave it to me. They thought I might like it and of course I chopped it up and I've made these boards for fretwork and I mean look at this. There's nothing wrong with that. This is a piece about 10 inches, 10 inches wide and about 6 mil, quarter of an inch thick. I can make it thinner if I need to be. That's a perfectly acceptable piece of wood. In actual fact there are five pieces there but if you look closely you can barely see the join and when it's done on a piece of fretwork you won't notice it so you know you, you, there's all sorts of things you can use this for. Now I'll just show you some of the bits of wood I used to make my small boards with. It's basically scrap, none of it's bought, I don't weigh any of it. This is a piece, it, I don't know what this is, it looks like a bit of ramen or it may be ash, I'm not sure, it's got varnish on it. But when I finish with it that'll do for something. This is some rather nice wood. Um, this is, as you'll see it's got some cream paint on it and it's peeling off there. This is a bit of maple actually and it's out of somebody's kitchen. I mean can you imagine? There's nothing wrong with that. I had about five of these. It's perfectly good wood and they chucked it in the skip. It's getting on for about an inch deep, maybe seven eighths of an inch, uh, but I can split that down the middle and join it together and make some nice boards. What I'll probably do with that one is cut it in half and then I'll get two pieces about 17 or 8 inches, eight, 17 or 18 inches long. This is some I did earlier from the other bits of maple. Um, as you can see it's a lovely white wood and the, these are pieces like the one I just showed you and I, I've split them down the middle. They'll contrast well with the mahogany if I make any designs I can use this as an overlay which will show up nicely. This is a piece of an old drawer or cupboard. Now this is actually solid oak. Again, can you believe people would throw this away? Solid oak. Too wide for me to rip like that. So what I'll have to do is cut it into strips and then rip it in half and join it together again which will make it better anyway. So that's the sort of thing I use to make my panels up. Uh, now let's put those out of the way and I'll show you what, how I go about it. On the bench you'll see some of the cramps that I use, cramps, clamps, whatever you want to call them. You, when you're doing these you do need quite a few and this is just a selection. I've got more than this I've bought over the years. These are, are very uh, 
cheap ones. They're, they're just an aluminium thing. They're for light duty use, but they are ideal uh, for clamping these little panels because they're light and they don't take up much trouble. They're not very strong, but they, are, they do the job fine. So, you, you know, you can use those as well. This is um, a heavy duty, really heavy duty record clamp. I bought these when they were practically given away when... Uh, in the old days when record was British made and they got taken over uh, they sold a lot of stuff off and I bought these very very cheaply and I've got about 12 of these I think in my workshop the only disadvantage is they are rather heavy to use when you've got three of these and a little tiny panel of wood it's quite a heavy thing but they're very good and they do work well now if you don't have any cramps or clamps it's perfectly possible to do the job I'm talking about just by using bits of wood like this. I'm not going to go into any great detail on these because I've already covered it in a previous video. If you look through my videos you'll find one about making small panels uh, where I showed you how I made these and, and how to use them. But basically it's just two bits of wood with some holes in and two bolts so anybody could do it. You, know, you just pop your wood in there you see. Obviously you need two, at least two. And then you tighten these bolts down so that it holds the pieces um, together in parallel. And then you use these homemade wedges and you just tap those in like so against the bolts. Obviously they've got to be the right size. And then as you tap these in it pushes the boards together. So actually they're quite good. In some ways they're probably better than the clamps because they actually hold uh, as well as holding the wood tightly together after you've glued it, uh, they also keep the boards flat so they don't tend to, to step up or anything, as, as I'll show you in a moment. So they are quite good. So by all means, if you think you haven't got any cramps and clamps and you don't want to spend money, just make some of these out of scrap wood. They'll do the job fine. I use these for years. This one's a little bit rough because you can see the glue mark and I haven't bothered too much. And it's, there's a bit of step in here because... It's flat on this side, or, or fairly flat, flat enough anyway, uh, and that side's bumpy. And that's the advantage if you've got a planar thickness, so you don't have to worry too much, uh, because any deviation in the thickness will put right afterwards when you plane it down. If you haven't got planar thicknesses and things like that, you can still do it, but you have to use sanding, but you've got to be a bit more accurate and get the boards the right thickness before you glue them up, basically. Otherwise, you'll have a heck of a lot of sanding to do. Anyway... That's, that's what they look like and that's the clamps. So next thing is I'll show you how I prepare the, the timber for making the boards. There's a piece of oak here and I've got a piece of mahogany. Uh, both of these were out of a skip, they're just scrap items. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rip them in half using the band saw. You could do it on a table saw, I've got a table saw and that's what I use, but the, the difference is that with a band saw it cuts a much narrower curve and if you've got a piece of wood that's not too thick uh, it, it'll save the wood, whereas if you put it on a table saw, because of the, the tungsten tips, which is like a chisel-like effect, it cuts a larger curve and wastes more of the wood, so by the time you've cut it in half, you haven't got so much left. So bandsaw's better if yours will coat. This one will just about cut through this, so I'm just going to put my glasses on and cut this, and I'll just show you how I do it. Many years ago when I was doing woodworking I always assumed that if you were gluing something if you left the two edges rough it made a better joint and that um, the glue penetrated the roughness or whatever the ups and downs of the roughness and made a better joint but that's not not actually true I since found out that the smoother you can get this surface the better the glue is going to be now the thing is I, I, I can't go into all the atomics of it or the technicalities as you might call it because it is a bit complicated and I'm just a simple bumpkin really but the point is this uh, I did read somewhere that the glue or adhesive sticks the wood um, at the atomic level basically now that may sound a bit silly but what happens is this if you plane this down on a, a planing machine especially a rotary planing machine or even a hand plane to come to that but any, anything, when you plane it down, it looks smooth and it feels lovely and smooth to the touch. But if you put that 
under a microscope, you'd find that that surface was like the Malvern Hills, up and down. Uh, it looks flat, but it isn't actually at the atomic level, so to speak. And what happens is, if you get it as smooth as possible, there are still all these bumps and, and, and hills and, and bits and pieces on the wood, dents and bumps, whatever you want to call them, and all the glue does simply, it sets uh, in between and it fills all the bumps and lumps to make it as smooth as possible so the thing sticks together atomically so to speak. Now I know that sounds a bit strange and I found it hard to believe but I can see the sense in it. If you if you get two sheets of glass, uh, glass is pretty smooth as you know but even glass if you looked under a microscope wouldn't be perfectly flat but two pieces of glass you put some water between the two and stick them together just with water and try and pull them apart and you'll find they really do stick. So there is sense in this theory that the actual adhesive does hold the wood together um, at the atomic level rather than actually sticking them so to speak. I know that sounds a bit odd and you'll probably think I'm crackers but I'm only explaining it because it's something I read in a book. So what I'm getting down to is get the surface as smooth as possible obviously you've got to have it perfectly square because otherwise you'll end up with the boards being like that instead of dead flat now so the next job is to get these edges flat it doesn't matter about the surface as long as i get the edges but i'm going to go and have a cup of tea now because uh, i've been jabbering on for ages and it's now quarter past three and i have my tea at three everybody knows everything stops at three for tea in the UK anyway, so I'm going to pop and have my tea, so I'll see you a bit later, after I finish my tea and biscuits, I'll come back and I'll show myself doing the edges on the router. Mm -hmm.